So you love everybody, but you also hate everybody. I watched two episodes of the fucking Tiger King, man. How is Woo-wee! it? That yeah. season. Oh, man. Episode one, all about uh, they bring up the insurrection, uh, storm in the Capitol. And episode two, find out a lot more about Costa Rica. Wait, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> A lot more. I, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> a lot more. How do they tie the insurrection mm-hmm. to Tiger King? <laughs> Who's involved with the fucking insurrection? Uh, the Tiger Party. A member of the Tiger Party. It, which Tiger Party? The Baskin clan or? The Tiger Party. The Tiger Party that took Joe Exotic 1, the Tiger King airplane, <laughs> to... <laughs> All right, yeah, I I saw that that dropped today, so I'm gonna have to tune in. But. Dude, it's it's everything you could hope for in a follow up. <laughs> That's incredible. everything. Oh, it's so good. They got they got internet sleuths and shit. They start this guy dated Carol for a second. Like, let's interview him. Oh, this guy was a housekeeper for their neighbor. Let's interview. It's what? crazy, <laughs> crazy. Ah, oh, shit. Well, I can't wait for that. Oh, it's, I'm gonna go after this and just binge it the rest of the night i'm pretty sure yeah that's actually my first move after we get off here it's yeah man i'm addicted i'm back in it like i'm back 100 fully in it Mm -hmm. yeah the dudes the dude that had no legs is charging people 15 bucks for a selfie now because he's famous no way yeah (laughs) he's pete rose in it (laughs) 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 no fucking way Just oh, wait till you get to episode incredible. two, man. Oh, lot out of so much Costa Rica. Holy shit. All right. On that note, let's get started. There's nothing better than that. What's up, guys? It's your boy Smalls back on All Purpose Garbage. Um, I'm idiot number one. Idiot number two on the College Football Show for Idiots is my man Deke making his return after deciding not to show up last week. Fuck you, Greg. Whoa. Whoa. What, what happened? What did I do? Well, I mean, I don't know, man. He he came in. He Yeah, fuck some... you, Greg. Yeah, you came in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he impeded on your turf, but you know what? Hey, hey, we had some good analytical talk. No, I needed him to do that, so I appreciate him very much. Yeah, it was the first show that we weren't just talking 100% bullshit. He did Penn State pit convos, huh? He did, and you know what? We paid each other a lot of compliments, which I did not expect. Greg is the fuck? No. Greg is the worst in arguments because he will always he'll okay. There's times on two beers deep where I'll say stuff and Greg 100% agrees with me because I bring up really good points and because he's a really nice person. And I'm like, Greg, you can't agree with me. That contradicts your whole point. He's like, Oh, I'm just agreeing with that one point. I'm like, no, like get angry. Mm-hmm. The only time he ever did get angry was USC versus Texas tech. Mm. At my uh, my kitchen during the stream of Palooza that my I got yelled at for. Mm. He said UNC was a comparable program to Texas Tech. In for what football. way? And in- that's what I said. I said, "What the fuck has UNC ever done?" I mean, but what the fuck has Texas Tech ever done? Exactly, but Texas Tech has at least put out good quarterbacks. UNC has put out Mitch Trubisky and Sam Howell. Well, they also put out Back, the, the, the Yates of Hell. Mm. So I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> true, true. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, it was, yeah. So Greg will compliment you to death during arguments. It's the worst. I hate it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. We weren't really arguing. And, I mean, he he paid some compliments to our defense. And I said, Kenny Pickett's awesome, which I've said many times. So it was a, it was a good uh Good compliment fest. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um, a little compliment off. Yeah, absolutely. Even though Pitt definitely came out on top this week. No question. Yeah. Yes, they did. Big Cats proclaimed game of the year. Um, can I pick it? It's so fucking cool. Um, he's, yeah, he's dope as shit. Yeah. A few things. Um, go donate to Movember. Like I said, just Google Thoughts from the Bench Movember. It'll pop up. 
Uh, definitely think we've already exceeded our goal from, uh, that we set last year. We're trying to double that. So we've exceeded what we got last year already. Uh, money goes towards a great cause, men's overall health, mental health, prostate cancer, the whole shebang. Uh, we currently have, which I have not donated in my portion, nor obviously will I do not. I need to see on the end of the month what we have from Twitch, but we currently have 155 in the campaign. Mm-hmm. Pair that with what we expect to come from Twitch and what we're getting from the core side of things. We're in a yep. really good shape to be last year. Yeah, 100%. Um, so uh, the other thing, we talked about it on draft day a little bit, but I uh, appreciate anyone that came out to the Yinzer Mob tailgate. Mm, uh, yes. Go take a look at the video that dropped this week. It was Dre fucking killed it. Dre kills it every time he does that. So, yeah, but then he something. tweets stupid ass shit. He does. Like he said, uh, he doesn't know how, but what was it? This is, oh, he said that the the Fenway sports program buying the pens was going to be how Pittsburgh gets an NBA team. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I didn't see that link. And he agreed. He said in the tweet, I don't know how this correlates. And Dre's the king of just throwing shit. But man, he goes out one week, he's a king. The next week he comes back and it's just like, who is this guy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was, that was interesting. But he killed it. Uh, yes, he did. Yep. Shout out Dre. Shout out Ian's mob. Shout out Big Cat. Um, shout out Zach. PGH shout out Zach. Help. Yep. Absolutely. Was that your first time meeting Zach? It was actually. Okay. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah. Love it, that dude. Yeah. No, he fucking hilarious. Like the shit that he says is just so fucking off the wall. You never yep. know what what's gonna come come out of his mouth, but you can guarantee it's gonna be funny. He so. was the one where I thought, like Peter was a little bit of a loose cannon in mm-hmm. his days. But he was trying yeah. to stir shit up. Zach has a really good... He, there's something that I've always... I think that I'm very good at, and it's connecting things in witty ways. Mm-hmm. So, like, making really strong analogies and stuff like that. Like, I've always, I've always been very good at it, and I like doing it. Zach does it, but he doesn't think through the lens of the audience. Mm-hmm. So, he'll be like, this is like the time in Hunchback when that guy killed everyone. And we're like... <laughs> What the fuck did you just say? Like, why was that your analogy? Mm-hmm. Like me, I would have probably got 101 Dalmatians because it's animal cruelty. And we all go, oh, as opposed to like human genocide. Mm-hmm. But he just do. So he was the one through the history of Thoughts of the Match I was a little worried about. I'll be honest. Yeah. And he's definitely said some stuff that I'm like, sheesh. But but I it, at least he says it in a funny way that it's like, yeah. OK, like, you know. I feel okay about it, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna laugh. Mm-hmm. 100%, I'm gonna laugh. 100%. It's funny. Um, all right, <clears throat> Deke, let's get into it. I'm. Um, we're just not that great this year. Penn State goes down to Michigan. I actually, I I was really confident. It, Michigan's good. I, Michigan's good. I don't think Michigan's that good though. Okay. Um. Not. I don't think they're. What are they now? Seventh. Or something. Yeah. I don't think they're um, that good. I think they're they're eight right now. Okay, they're definitely top twenty five. I'll, oh, I'll give them. I'll definitely give them that. I don't know if they're eight good, but I mean, at this point, they got over. They they beat us. They lost to Michigan State. The last mm-hmm. test really is going to be Ohio State. Obviously, they're gonna. I think they're gonna lose that game because. It's Jim Harbaugh. He can't beat Ohio State, period. Why does Penn State hate Dotson? You mean, why didn't why didn't we pass to him? It just, you have a guy who's elite. Now, here's a guy. Here's a guy. <laughs> no, but I mean, the last time you guys had an elite level guy at this potential count, I mean, it's, it's normally been running backs, right? Mm-hmm. Miles Sanders, Saquon Barkley, both were premier top tier talents. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I'd love me some Alan Robinson. I don't know if he was really he highly was fucking great. sought after. He was, was he? Okay. He was Boom. great. It seems weird when you have another guy of that kind of really potential blue chip caliber and he's not getting the rock a lot. Now, granted, he had nine catches, but like, I don't know. It just feels weird. To me. Well, the thing is, I think everyone keys on him. But what I will say, sure. he only had one drop, and it's because he got fucking hammered. Anytime you throw him the ball, he catches it. Yep. Um, but, I mean, teams are keen on him now. And, I mean, yep. he he is one of the best route runners in the country, in my opinion. And, I mean, he's the one that uh, 
put us I, I guess he tied up the, the ball game for us um on that two point conversion. But mm-hmm. he just he catches everything, man. Yeah. Um I'm still in I go back and forth on this. I'm in James Franklin purgatory right now. I just don't Dude. I just don't you're you're down bad, bro. Because there's I I have never heard you say like you did two weeks ago that you really thought you, like you want Franklin to take the USC job. Yeah, and or the LSU I, job. And the, yeah, and I I went back on it, but <sighs> between the Sean Clifford thing, him playing against Illinois, which he should should have never played. Period. Yep. Between that and going for another fucking fake kick like the first fake we pulled a fake punt it was glorious it was fucking glorious and then to do it again on like the next drive or it was either i think it might have been the same drive i don't remember but to do it again like you get one a game dude you get one of those a game if you're able to pull it off fucking great you don't do it twice in either the same drive or back-to-back drives that's the second one was awful you don't get to do that twice like, I don't know who the fuck Franklin thinks he is just letting that happen. That's just, that's why I'm like, he gets the recruits and I don't want him gone because right now we have Drew Aller, who's the best quarterback recruit in the country. We have him signed on. And you're getting all these guys, but like, you, you're not putting yourself in position to win games. And it's like, what are we doing? You know, what are we doing here? And what's the point of it all? So like all the sadness, like I don't know. I'm just I'm stuck. I I just don't I don't know how to feel about it because like I don't I don't want him to leave, but he also just doesn't fucking win games and he doesn't make good decisions in games. Doesn't know when to call timeouts. Like I just don't fucking get it. I don't know. I don't Probably know. my favorite stat from this game is Sean Clifford's 16 rushes for 16 yards. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was a weird one to read. Yeah, it's a weird one. I mean, it's because he got sacked. Fuck our, our <laughs> O line. Oh my god, man! Don't even fucking get me started. I'm just sick of getting lied to every year. Oh, the O line's gonna be a strength again, or finally gonna be a strength this year. It never fucking happens. It hasn't been the case since like 2016, and they just keep lying to everyone about yep. that. We can't run block. We couldn't fucking pass ball. I they have two elite edge rushers, but I don't give a fuck. Like can't fucking run twenty for eighty eight. I mean, Jesus Lord in heaven. Yeah, it's just great in Michigan, but I mean, yeah, and again, Michigan's D line is really fucking good. But mm-hmm. like, oh my god, I just it's it's the game decisions that really get me, and it's the O line play that really gets me. The offense, I don't know if it's like. You don't have an O line, you don't have an offense. And Clifford's doing what he can outside of that fumble. Like he's doing what he can. And receivers are playing well. Like Parker Washington's having himself a year or two quietly. Like tight ends are sick. Like Theo Johnson's a mm-hmm. beast. Brenton Strange is a beast. Tyler Warren can't be stopped getting into the end zone. It's just the line. I don't. I just don't fucking understand it. And finally, Kevon Lee shows up at running back and kind of puts together a game. But you can't do it if your line doesn't fucking do anything. So like, no, I, I'm just you also can't let up 158 yards on the ground. That's a damning. I'm just I'm frustrated. I'm just <laughs> God fucking damn it. Like, Where's the what's the silver lining for Penn State this year? Is there one? The silver lining will be if we somehow pull off a win against Michigan State and just play the mm. spoiler. That's the only thing I can really. And Jahan like Dawson that. just coming out as the best receiver. He goes for country. like 700 yards against State. Yeah. I mean, he put up 240 against Maryland. Like, that's. Uh, he yeah. just He's just a fucking incredible player. He, but, and Clifford. And again, the silver lining, at least, is that Clifford isn't playing poorly. I'm not saying no. he's, th- he's incredible by any means, but he's playing well. He's overall. a dog, man. Yeah. He ain't great, but he's a dog. Mm-hmm. And he gets smacked around every game, too. Like yep. I feel like every time he goes down, like he just gets hit so fucking hard and he keeps getting yep. up. So, like, it's a little dog, but a dog. A dog. Um, Oof. 
Uh, big, big red dog Clifford. Um, Little tiny Sean Clifford dog. <laughs> um, I'm moving past it. Lane Train. Good. Finally. Finally. Yeah, this was the first game that Ole Miss felt like they were Ole Miss. <laughs> I know, and it, this is the first time where I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm not, I'm still not bought into Lane Kiffin, hundred <laughs> percent. Like, I think he's a great coach, offensively, and eh, he's there. And they, he's the guy. Really, they they won it on the ground this week against a really good A and M defense. Um, mm-hmm. I just. I don't know. I'm not, I was, I was a little surprised by this, but I just, I want Lynn Kiffin to be better, and I'm glad that he. I want him yeah. to play spoiler against Alabama, Georgia, and all these guys. But. Yeah, I want him to be that wild card in the group of traditionally top guys. But my f- honest to god frustration with him is that, uh, Matt Corral has not taken that step i don't do it it was such an open field at the beginning of the year for what quarterback was going to be the guy because we talked yep. about spencer rattler we talked about how we talked about malik willis corral was a guy in that conversation and then early in the year we're like this is the guy and he hasn't been there and like if you are an offensive coach with a guy that should be the number one quarterback in the country it's frustrating for me as a fan of football to not see that guy do great it's literally i can like harbaugh at michigan never has the quarterback i yep. like Caden mcmara but he's never going to elevate any quarterback ever. That makes me think you are not a quarterback coach and not a good offensive coach. I mean, we've talked about it with Lincoln Riley. I still think Lincoln just gets good quarterbacks, but when he has quarterbacks, they perform well, except for this year, the fucking frauds. But that's why I get frustrated with Ole Miss. That's where Lane Kiffin pisses me off. You have a guy and he's still just throwing for 240 and a tutty every year. Like this dude should be lighting teams up. Yep. Yeah. I, I don't know. It was it was also weird that he was the celeb picker on game day. I don't know if you saw that, but like, <laughs> isn't that weird? Like, I did not see that. Seems a little biased. I'm gonna be honest. A little bit, yeah. And <laughs> like, I don't know that that was a weird that was a weird move for ESPN to pull. You couldn't find anyone else. Like, there has to be someone else that went to Ole Miss that's more famous and maybe not that's more so- famous. Like, Weird, you know. Pick a fucking random celebrity. I don't. Care. Who do you pick for this game? I don't even know if he picked this game. <laughs> I, I I didn't watch it. I like. I, I hope he picked Texas. It, some of, he also picked Miami at one point because he's like, yeah, I have a house in Coral Gables. That was his reasoning. What a douche. <laughs> well, that's what pissed me off about one of like the ne- one of the. I guess we're not going to get to it in this section, so I can say it out loud. The balls on this, bro. To completely fuck over the state of Tennessee before the balls kicked mm-hmm. pissed me off beyond belief. Yep. Yeah. yeah. They're going to beat Georgia. It's like, bro, like, shut up. Let them, <laughs> like, what the fuck are you jinxing it for? Yeah. Lady? Yeah. Yeah. And he also, he also pulled the old, uh, who did he talk? He was talking about, oh, he was talking about Mississippi State. He's like, uh, Mike Leach is the best offensive mind in college football. That's what he said. And they're playing him next, like, next week. <laughs> so like he sets himself up that if he loses to these teams, it looks better because he said they're good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> douchebag. <laughs> I I do like him though. I, I want him. I just want his. I, I want Ole Miss to be better. And they're Agreed. getting there. They're. I think they're getting there. But um, that is until he leaves for the USC job, which oh like, yeah, my, it'll happen. Maybe not USC, but like he'll leave for another job. He's not a guy that sticks around. So no. Uh, He's a mercenary. Yeah. Uh, Wake Forest. I don't know what it is about Wake Forest, about being in these crazy games, but like. Sam Hartman, baby. Dude. dude. Sam fucking Hartman. Dude, he. I love that kid. Like, I really don't know how else to word it. QB1 done fucked me up and who I love, but 290 and three touchdowns against. I mean, it's an NC State team that's ranked. Like, let's be real here. They were good. NC State's good. Mm Mm-hmm. But Wake Forest, bro, nine and one currently right now. I, I love me some Sam Hartman. I do, I do. Now he threw three picks. Um, oh yeah. But he also put up some good numbers. He also threw for three tutties. So like you know he, he, he. I think this team's pretty, pretty fucking good. I, I don't know if they're gonna make the playoff. I doubt it because the ACC is just so down this year. But I don't know. Who knows? Um, 
So, yeah, I don't know what it is about Wake Forest just getting in these crazy close high-scoring games, but I'm here for it. Um, I, I just want to throw out there, if there was going to be a wild-card addition to the NFL draft, it would be the redshirt sophomore Sam Hartman. Yeah. If he wants to take advantage of the weakest quarterback class we've seen in recent memory, I'm not saying he's going first round or one of the first quarterbacks, but I do think he's playing himself into a second or third round conversation with a flyer. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. He's just he's solid. Like overall, he reminds like, me of Will Greer a little bit, a little bit. Nothing yeah. crazy there. Just a good quarterback that's going to try his ass off for your team and probably won't be anything. But God, do I love the kid! Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Wake Forest is a team that I want to root for. Yes, that's very much thing. so. Like. Big Chris Paul guy. Yeah, that too. Um, Oklahoma. Oklahoma, Deke. Finally. Fuck you. Fucking finally. Frauds. Greg texted me and said frauds. I was like, you know. Yep. Let's, God, fuck you. And it was Baylor go. too, which made it so much better. Mm -hmm. And I called this one. I thought that this was going to be the week. Dude. Was this one of our bets? One of your guys' bets, I should say? Uh, I had the over, which did not hit. I definitely thought. That. No, I'm sorry. And the, the you the and picks. Greg. Yep. Yes. Picks. Yep. Yeah. I, we both. I think we both picked Baylor, actually. If Greg would have picked Oklahoma, I would have lost it. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure he picked Baylor. But yeah, we were both kind of thinking like, well, I don't know. Like, this might be the week. And I think I talked him, talked him into it. I, I went in. Picking Baylor. I think I talked in, into it a little bit. Um, did you watch this game? I did not, but okay. I did see that Spencer Rattler went in for a drive. He went four <laughs> for six and 36. And that's yeah. what I was going to ask about is I didn't watch the game. I was looking at the stat line this morning. Uh, Caleb Williams, we kind of were like, ah, oh, he could be good. His Spencer Rattler's shit. I just, it doesn't make me happy to see Lincoln Riley fail. That's how I'll word this. I, I know that I give Lincoln Riley a tough time because I don't believe he's a quarterback whisperer, but that's mainly because of Dre, not Lincoln's fault. But what I will add is, though, fuck Oklahoma. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just that plain and simple, ladies. Well, and yeah. And gentlemen. Yeah. Um, I should also note that the score was not. It was 20, 24 to 7, and Oklahoma got a garbage time touchdown. Yep. The only reason the score even looks kind of close. And. Lincoln Riley's reason for putting in uh, William or putting in Rattler was to give the team a spark. You don't put in a quarterback for a drive and then take it like that's demoralizing for any any like any swagger that Caleb Williams had gone. Yeah, let me take out our starter and put in the guy that already failed being our starter to spark our team and then take him out. Yeah, that's a that's kind of a clown move. Also, I love dude. If it was against any other team, I'd be like, okay, it isn't really necessary. Necessary. I love the fact that Baylor kicked a field goal with three seconds left on the clock. Just a fucking spit in their face. That's so fucking funny. That is just so elite. Petty um, is as Petty does. Yeah, that is. And, and if the guy came out after, and he's like, he yeah, it's point differential for the Big 12 ch championship. And it's like, okay, sure. If, yeah. you, if you want to throw that out there, sure. Well, I think he did as a big fuck you. I would do it as a fuck you, but you also got to think about when they're doing the committee. And I know Baylor's not anywhere near the top four, but when they're doing the committee, they look back at every point differential score, everything. Everything in college football is super subjective. Yep. Like all of it is. So they could look at this game and be like, oh, yeah, they won by, yeah, 27 4. Okay, that's a good one. 27 or 24 14 feels a lot closer than 27 14. So I, I get that there's stats that go into the Big 12 and that type of stuff. But as as far as like what they've given us as a prospect of college football with this playoff, fuck it. I want every point I could ever get. 100%. 100%. I still think he did it as a big fuck you, which I love. I hope so. Because um, fuck Oklahoma. Um, Ohio State, this was some... I was on fold. Uh, neither was Ohio State. Every, people were saying that, you know... This might be the upset game just because Purdue has been playing pretty well. Yeah, they've been really good. I mean, they 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 played well. They had a really good game. Yeah. Uh, Ohio State just, you know, when you go in at halftime with 45 fucking points, it's tough to uh, yeah. it's tough to overcome that. Well, that's the thing. Aiden McConnell went, what you, he threw for 390 yards. Four yeah, tidies, no 52 picks. 52 attemptions, dude. 
Yeah, like that. Attemptions. <laughs> the I know. Fuck was that word? I know what you meant. Um, I combined over the words. But I mean, I, the difference here was just Ohio State could run the ball, and they just did it, like all up in Purdue's face. That was that was the difference. Oh yeah, um, which was sick. And you know they were playing at home. Purdue has that magic when they're playing at home. But yeah, I, I had a feeling it wasn't going to happen. Also, the Garrett Wilson game. Mm-hmm. Three touchdowns, 126 on 10 catches. This is what I wanted out of the cat. This yep. is what we've been pressing for for weeks now. Be a number one. And granted, you know, Smith, which I'm not pronouncing that last name, uh, had 139 in a tutty, but three touchdowns for Garrett Wilson. He's back in the first round pick category for me. Easily. Yep. No question. 100%. Where do you put Olave? Olave's tough because mm-hmm. Olave was the one I was the harshest on. Uh, both of them I was. Olave, I thought coming into the season was going to be better. Uh, for me right now, he's he's second round. Yeah. He's a guy that like he reminds me of um, not by play style or anything like that, but he's going to fall into that Juju Michael Pittman kind of like late second. But Van Jefferson, oh, he's a guy that's ready to go right now. He's just not that blue chip category. I think he'll step into a pro team. He'll be utilized right away, but I think he's going to slip in the draft just due to a couple other receivers being better. Yeah, yeah. It- you watch him though, and I feel like anytime he, he gets the ball, it's like, okay, that guy's the best player on the field. Yeah. But it's only it, it just hasn't happened as much as you would have thought. Um. Yeah. He's a game breaker that ha- needs the possibility to do it as opposed to taking the game. He doesn't yeah. go to the game. The game comes to him. Yeah. Um. Last game was definitely not a headlining game. Jeez. But oh my god, Texas is. Not fucking back. Kansas so close to being back. <laughs> Kansas is the skid mark on the underwear of college football. Kansas is the wor- one of the worst programs in the country, period. And you, at one point, they were down 40, 42 to 21 against Kansas. Now, they made it a game. But, man, this is a bad fucking look. Wasn't it? Was it? Bam! Who was Kansas up on that? Oklahoma. We were like freaking. What? Yes. Okay. It was <laughs> I was like, oh no, it's not Alabama. Kansas, dude. Was is this the first time they've won a game this season with their two wins? Is that them or no? That's no, isn't it Kansas, Kansas that, like had like two and massive eight. lose. Now they, they had that two massive eight. losing streak yep. for like fourteen years. Yeah. Okay. The Kansas is back. That's Can- all. We're Kansas for. might be back, man. It, yeah, Texas. Apparently, their recruits are just laughing at them right now. I saw something about their recruits just, like, laughing at them. Oh, my God. Is Arch Manning going to Texas now? I don't know. I'm not sure. Because, I mean, if you go out and lose to Kansas, I don't fucking know, like... Bro, they threw for seven touchdowns combined for two guys. Like, (laughs) when have you ever thrown for seven touchdowns and lost? Yeah. (laughs) What the fuck? Just Texas, man. Texas, what a fucking sham! SEC, SEC, like I love it. Oh, I love it so. They're gonna go get absolutely drugged through the mud on every game. I fucking hope so, man. Jesus Christ! Like, and I don't know if Deke, I don't know if you saw it too, but did you see Sark's press conference after the game? No, it was one of the weirdest. Yeah, I don't remember the quote, but like, it was something out of a movie where like this. This guy's saying like, "Yeah, you take this situation. You're you're probably wondering what what's the plan here? What am I trying to create?" It was one of the weirdest answers I've ever heard. It was fucking bizarre. I've been hyping him up for like two weeks. Too. It was like it was so cringy. <laughs> and dork. You're like, oh, I, you gotta look it up. I, I'm not gonna. I'll watch it after. I'm geeked. Yeah, but like Texas, man. Sheesh. Yeah, dude, that's a frustrating one. Not back. Um, all right. Rankings. There's not really a ton of note here. Um, of course there. I, the one thing I'll say about this is Cincinnati, I think should be ranked above Oregon. I agree, man. It's, it's frustrating for me that you build a franchise or you build a franchise. You still have a franchise, but you build a program up in Cincinnati. Granted, they don't play anyone, but it, they still have built this program up and it's been electric and I get that they may not have played the people that Oregon have played or Ohio state or whatever, but 
you can't convince me that now do i think they're one of the top four teams in the country up for debate do i think they deserve to be yes. one of the top four teams yes they do yes that, I, that's a good way of putting it like head to head against some of these other teams they might lose but having said that what's your argument for some of the other teams that have gone in in past years yes you know like hey they deserve it clemson perfect example now did they probably does they were definitely one of the better teams but they were playing in a dog shit conference in yep. in a few of those years they made it in so like you can't tell me that cincinnati for what they've now they haven't been doing themselves any favors in some of these games but you can't no. tell me that they haven't they they deserve to at least get more credit than what they're getting right now yeah i, I mean Again, we can say it all day. They haven't played anyone or done anything crazy, but they still have an elite defense. They're undefeated. Yep. And here's my other side of it is traditionally my comeback for a lot of NFL situations is like when people rip on Tomlin losing to the Jaguars in the playoffs. I'm like, if only Tomlin would have scheduled tougher teams like you can't fucking do that in the pros. In college, you do make your schedule. So yep. there is something to be said about since he not really, quote unquote, playing a tough team. I hope if they finish the season undefeated and beat SMU. Yep. Mostly because State and Ohio State are playing against each other this week. But I hope that if Cincy proves against SMU that they are who they are, we'll be fine and happy and dandy and they make it in. Because here's the thing, Smalls. Cincy gets in and they get absolutely fucking ragdolled in the college football playoffs. All right. Whatever. We tried it. Guess what? Yep. Cincy's never allowed back in until they beat some better opponents. Yep. They deserve a shot. I think they deserve a shot. Oh, the counter to that that I've heard is like, hey, Cincy might have to take one for the team here because... If they don't get in this year, it's like, all right, it's time to expand it, which everyone thinks that it should get expanded. Ooh. So it's like, hey, guys, I know that you guys probably deserve it, but you want to just take one for the team here? And so everyone gets mad about it. So I've heard that argument, too. So, I don't hate that. I also think that if Coastal Carolina didn't get in, we should have started the fight back then. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, I know Alabama – on paper might be I, I don't think that they're the number two team in the country but you know what they played fucking new mexico state so no one's going to question it this week they put they hung 59 on new mexico state you don't think they're number two no they have Is not because they've okay. not shown me that they are the number two team in the country whatsoever and i don't hate it and as soon as it, people start to quit like they barely beat lsu they barely beat florida the two teams that are not good this year um and of course this week they go the sec does this bullshit thing where they schedule garbage out of conference games late in the year they're the only mm -hmm. conference that does this and it's to do exactly what we're seeing and just boosting their resume closer to the end of the year is that smart yeah. sure but i think it's it's just bullshit. Um, other than that, I don't really have much else. I mean, Houston getting in, I think, is probably pretty big. Uh, San Diego State Cincy. making some moves. Um, UTSA, I want. Th I think they're better than twenty two, but they they did not play well this week. UTSA, I think, is actually a really good team, but yeah, they're just they're not going to get a look. Um, yeah, it's. Not a ton of movement this week. I think most of the big dogs hung tough. So, um, Deke, what's yes, on sir. tap? So, we are on Makitake. Uh, ESPN's Jordan Reed this morning at 6 a.m. put out his 2022 mock draft. So, we're just going to go through some of the big names, uh, the landing spots for guys that we've talked about, and the teams, because I think the teams is obviously a drastic part here. At 08-1 and 1 against the Pittsburgh Steelers this week, because they hate me as a fan, uh, they have the Detroit Lions taking Kayvon Dibido. Kayvon, we've all said this. He should be the number one pick. Uh, I think he has the hype of the number one pick. This is a very weak class coming out. It's going to be a very dirty, like, uh, I guess, ugly class. It's going to be a lot of trench, guys. I like Dibido. I concern myself with what the Lions will do here because they don't have a quarterback of the future. I could see them going quarterback or trading back and getting quarterback. Thibodeau seems like a luxury pick here, but I don't hate it. Uh, at number three, they have the New York Jets, two and seven currently right now, taking Derek Stingley Jr. The Jets took Zach Wilson in the most recent draft. Uh, they're presiding QB the future. They are playing Joe Flacco this week because Mike White and Zach Wilson are both hurt. The Jets need everything, literally everything. I think that Elijah Moore has come out from LSU. I think that he is now becoming 
their number one target, which is good for them. Corey Davis has been banged up. So I think they go receiver later in the class, but I do see them taking the quarterback here. Uh, the farther down we go, some other notable name that we both love smalls. I think it's the best fit in this draft. That is the Philadelphia Eagles, who have three current top 10 picks uh, in most mocks, taking Kyle Hamilton, the safety out of Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. Kyle Hamilton, absolute freak. Eagles secondary, terrible despite having Darius Slay. So I do like that fit. Probably going to maintain my top fit in the class. Uh, in Reed's mock draft, though, the current number one quarterback being taken is Matt Cor- Corral, excuse me, out for the Washington football team at eight. The Washington football team is at Taylor Heineke all year. Um, he's played as well as anybody could play in that position, but he's not a franchise quarterback and Fitzmagic most likely is done with the football team. Uh, I expect Fitzmagic's career to go into a situation where he will most likely not sign with the team instantly and be ready if someone gets hurt. But Matt Ole Miss goes to Washington football team. He could be the top quarterback in this class. I don't really have any issues with that. Uh, we've talked about it time and time again. At 12, probably the most interesting pick in this entire mock draft, Smalls, the Carolina Panthers taking Kenny Pickett, quarterback out of pit. Ooh. The Panthers recently let go of Teddy Bridgewater to the Broncos, and it brought in Sam Darnold from the Jets, who we all love Sam Darnold going into the season. Sam Darnold struggled, injury history. They have a lot of uncertains there. Kenny Pickett going 12 here would be a very interesting move. Uh, I think he might be the most pro-ready quarterback in this class, so it'll be interesting to see where he lands, which I love. At 13, probably uh, the biggest need in this entire draft is the Las Vegas Raiders going wide receiver, and they do take Chris Olave, wide receiver, Ohio State. Um, Again, I'm not in love with Olave uh, in terms of being a first-round pick, but they did lose Henry Ruggs, obviously, this season due to his DUI. Uh, he will be put in jail. Most likely career will be absolutely done. Uh, they did bring in Deshaun Jackson as a burner. They need weapons, but I also think they need to address their quarterback position and a couple other things. Uh, and then another pick here, the very next pick, the Denver Broncos taking Malik Willis quarterback out of Liberty. Smalls, you and I both love Malik Willis. Um, I got asked this week from a friend if the Steelers should trade up, try to get Willis all the stuff. My very quick answer was no, because Malik Willis will need an offense built around him, and that's not how the Steelers operate. But I do see the Denver Broncos changing their team between Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater, so they do have the potential to get Malik Willis kind of a winning opportunity uh, there. Um, The next sexy pick here, there's two that I think you'll like. One is the Cleveland Browns taking Garrett Wilson, wide receiver at Ohio Mm -hmm. State, the one of two wide receivers from Ohio State who will probably end up going in the first round. Odo Beckham Jr. is gone. They still have Donovan Peoples-Jones, Jarvis Landry, Higgins, a couple guys. Uh, I think that Garrett Wilson will be a first-round pick. I love him to the Browns here. And the next one is the New Orleans Saints taking Jahan Dotson, wide receiver, Penn Fuck State. Yeah. Love it. The Saints have no wide receivers. Uh, Callaway's been okay. Michael Thomas done for the year. Alvin Kamara is the best running back in football, not named Derrick Henry, in my opinion. Uh, injury banged up. Obviously, Jameis Winston towards ACL. This team is in full ready for the next season. I think Dotson can step in and have a really, really successful career there, which I love. Um, and the only other really notable name that I'll bring up here, um, let me scroll up for it, and that's because it's the Pittsburgh Steelers selection. Uh, it is Kenyon Green, offensive lineman for Texas A&M. The Steelers need to address their line. I don't hate this at all. Um, I would love to see the Pittsburgh Steelers address the quarterback position. If you're giving me the rest of the quarterbacks on the board, uh, I'm okay with not going with Sam Howell is how I'm going to word that one, Smalls. Uh, So I don't really think we need to address it here, especially uh, in the later rounds. We can you know, try for some different guys, but I do think O-line is a great solution here for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So, Yep. Dotson to New Orleans is really fucking interesting. I like that a lot. John Payton is a wonder. With yep. athletic, hundred percent. Um, and Kenny Pickett to the Panthers. I really like that. I really, really, yep. really like that. Will Greer went to the Panthers. Yep, yep. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, I do think that Kenny Pickett is a lot better than Will Greer. Oh, hundred percent. But um, yeah. No, that, that's that's interesting. Uh, Garrett Wilson to the to the Browns also makes sense. I don't know what it is, but the Browns love taking Ohio State guys. And they've done it before. Save money on the expensed gas. Absolutely. Absolutely. No. That, all those were, yeah, all those were pretty good. Matt Corral being the number one quarterback taken surprises me a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of one of those things where you ask yourself, um, this is not a disrespectful thing, but I remember when Joe Burrow had his magical season, someone asked me, well, where was he last year at LSU? It's like, well, why is Kenny Pickett turning it on this year? And it's like, you know what, man? Sometimes it just fucking works like that. Yep. 100%. 
Also, I think this, I think A. A. Ron Rogers is coming to the Steelers next year. So you know, yeah, I, I'd be fine a. A. with not Ron's addressing out there. Him. Yeah, Russell Wilson's out there. Mm-hmm. There's be... a lot of quarterbacks that have a lot of terminal. You know what? Who I wouldn't hate. I wouldn't hate us kicking the tires on Sam Darnold if they do take Kenny Pickett. Marcus Mariota, he's out there still. That There's is a true. lot of guys that are going to be good bridge quarterbacks. Maybe not our future, but good bridge quarterbacks. That yep. are like Derek fucking Carr from the Raiders, dude. If the Raiders yep. go to rebuild their franchise, give me Derek Carr every day of the week. Oh, 100%. I would definitely take that. 100%. All right. Mike Leach Award. Yay. He couldn't get me a shrunken head, so I got a T-shirt. All right, so this is an interesting one, Deke. I don't, I don't know if you see much about this guy, but what the fuck, Joey McGuire is the new Texas Tech head coach. He came in and just his, it's almost like the Steve Ballmer Clippers press conference. Yeah, he just, dude, he was so fucking fired up. His quote: "I'm a unicorn in coaching." All time quote. I don't know if you've. I don't have you seen anything about this guy? No, he looks like a lawyer. <laughs> he does. Um this guy is one of the more interesting head coaching hires that I think we're gonna see this year. Obviously you have USC, LSU, uh, a few other jobs out there that are kind of floating around. This is an interesting one. Texas is as we all know it's like texas california florida that is like one of the best states for recruiting period it's like a hotbed for recruits this guy was a high school coach for years four state titles and that's hard to do in texas that's really fucking impressive he is ingrained in texas high school football he spent a few years at baylor under matt roll did a really good job as tight ends coach. Ooh, okay. Um, and he that's where he's coming from now, from Baylor, and he's done a great job there. Um, he is one of the more when he says I'm a unicorn in coaching, he's one of the few guys that has made that jump in a short amount of time from high school to college head coaching, and he will get any recruit in Texas. Apparently, he's wow. already making a difference. In Texas Tech recruiting, which is not like the best recruiting in the state, it's very interesting. It's an interest. It's a weird quote, but I know what he's saying because he just made such a big leap, and he's still so connected with high school football in Texas that he's gonna get a shit ton of recruits. That's the thing, though. High school football in Texas is. I mean, the prospects coming out of California and Florida might be sometimes better, or whatever it is. Texas high school football mm-hmm. is the pros of high school football. Yep. Wow. That's genius, honestly. Yep. He, sorry. So he didn't win four state championships, but he's been to four state championship games. 20, 2006, 2013, 2014, runner-up in 2012. Seven district titles, nine by district championships, 12 straight playoff appearances. The guy knows how to coach, and he can get he can fucking recruit. So it's interesting. It's one of the more interesting hires. Apparently, he's just a god down there, and it's just I believe that Texas football. Everyone knows who Joey McGuire is. No one else in the country does. But apparently, this guy is just already making a massive fucking difference. And he apparently he has all the energy in the fucking world. So I fucking love him already. Yeah, Joey McGuire. Keep an eye out for that guy. Might take a few years, but keep an eye out for that guy. Um. All right, Deke, going to the gauntlet. Yes. We're going to start with the biggest game of the week. (laughs) Michigan State, Ohio State. Ohio State's just going to fucking out. Just like they did against Purdue, they're just going to run up the score. I got Ohio State in this one. I feel like you want Michigan State to win, though, so that Penn State can beat Michigan State. I, I want some chaos. I really I would really like some chaos at this point because I mean my my season's out the window. So let's why not make it happen? <laughs> what I think is gonna happen is Ohio Ohio State is just gonna put up sixty. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Ohio State as well. Yeah, it, it's 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 gonna be a good game, but yeah. it's Ohio State. Kate, yeah. is, he's too CJ Stroud is too good. Yeah. Uh Arkansas, Alabama. Ooh, did not highlight you right there. 
Arkansas, Alabama. God, I want I want Alabama to be exposed. I don't know if Arkansas is the team to do it. I got Bama here. Hashtag Razorbacks, but I'm going Bama as well. I think I'm glad Arkansas is back to being ranked. Yeah. I'm happy they're there. Uh, if they are the team to give Alabama their second loss, though, I will I will gladly just be wrong. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. This next game is a little interesting. You think? I'm going Utah here. Okay. I don't think that Oregon is that great. Utah is quietly pretty fucking good. Oregon's also not that good on the road. So I got Utah here in an upset. I'm sticking with the Ducks. I think uh, I, I I don't I agree with you. I don't think that they're number four in the country, but I do think they're better than the 24th team. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> so Iowa State, Oklahoma. I'm so torn on this one. Fuck it. I'll go I'll go Iowa State. I just cuz just cuz Lincoln Riley just decimated his offense's uh state of mind. Yeah, by, it's not a bad take. Yeah. And I might be wrong. I think maybe they do rebound and Iowa State isn't like that great. But I think they have something. Is it at Iowa State? It's at Oklahoma. Give me Oklahoma. I I don't have enough faith in Brock Purdy to lead a team. Uh, I trust Lincoln. As much as I would love to see Oklahoma lose again, I trust Lincoln Riley more than I do Brock Purdy. It's probably the right pick. I just, that quarterback thing is just, that's what sticks out. That's what sticks out for me. So there might be some, some shit going on there. Um, Wake Forest Clemson. I'm going Wake Forest here and I got them covering as well because Fuck Clemson. I'm back to trying to fade them. They, I'm a, I've been a mush, but I do think the Wake Forest is going to going to take this one. Yeah. I mean, I've been about as vocal as I can be about Sam Hartman down there. Uh, give me Wake Forest over Clemson. I think that this is going to be the year that Davos Swinney leaves Clemson for Alabama or some shit. Maybe he'll be a special teams coordinator over there or something because Clemson sucks ass. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, they've been better recently, and that they're favored in this game. They are favored. Wow. Three point favorites. I might bet some money on that one. Yeah. Exactly. Um, plus, they're two and eight, two and eight against the spread this year. So, like, I think Vegas favors Clemson too much. But of course, the two weeks that I, you know, the last two times I bet against Clemson against the spread, they fucking just screw me. So. Yep. Um, and then uh, Louisiana. And Liberty. This one's a tough one. It's an ugly one. I'm gonna go Liberty. Just are you? I am just because they're at home, and Louisiana is good. But I think Malik Willis is gonna have his coming out game, and he hasn't been outstanding this year. He's been good, but he hasn't been like outstanding. I think he's gonna put together a really good game. I was extremely, extremely disappointed in the Liberty Ole Miss game. Mm -hmm. So give me Louisiana. Okay. It's it's a fine pick. Like, I I don't hate it. It, We both love the Raging Cajuns coming into the year. We both love Malik Willis. My thing is that I was just so utterly disappointed with how that Ole Miss Liberty game turned out. It literally was Malik Willis versus all of Ole Miss. His team did nothing to help him, but at the same time, he is not. Lamar Jackson, who could do yep. that at Louisville. Like, yep. there's very small amount of quarterbacks who can do it on their own. Like, you even think about uh, guys like Deshaun Watson at Clemson. Like, he didn't have to do it on his own. He had very good talent around him. Yep. Malik Willis is not talented enough to make Liberty more than national news because of him. Yep. It, this one, it was a toss up for me. Definitely a toss up. So, <sighs> all right. It's a don't tell my bookie. I've been a fucking mush last. Last few weeks, it's been really bad. It's been a sad state of affairs. The only one I hit on was Pitt covering against UNC, and that only happened in OT. So, uh, even Kansas, who I fade, I've just been. You have to fade Kansas, and the first first time I take them, they I didn't hit any of my parlay picks. I'm just gonna leave that out there. 
Um, but I gotta, I gotta keep going. I gotta just press on because I'm a gambling addict uh, when it comes to college football. I'm taking the Utah over at 59. Um, just because I think Utah, what is it? Uh, Utah, yeah, six out of the last six games they've hit on the over. So, and I do think that Oregon's offense is decent. So I'm going to take the over at 59, and it's not a crazy line. So I feel relatively confident in that one. Who knows, though? I've been a mush. Illinois, Iowa. Illinois is 9-1 against the under all year. So it's a low low score, but Iowa's offense is also trash. Give me the under in that one. Um, Baylor, Kansas State. This one's an interesting one. Uh, the home team in all of Baylor's games this year, the home team is 9-1 against the spread. It's almost, it's pretty much a pick em, but I'm going to take Kansas State covering at minus one. And then, like I said, I'm back to trying – just because I'm just – I gotta I gotta keep going until I hit it. Um, Kansas or Clemson against the spread is awful, and I do think Wake, Wake Forest is the better team here, despite the fact that they're underdogs this week. Give me Wake covering as the dogs. So this one, I, I gotta get back to my winning ways. I was hitting so many early on, and I, I just spent three or four weeks where I was hitting like everything. And then I've just gone so ice cold recently. I don't hate the over under picks. I think that I would take Baylor riding high this week, but I don't hate Kansas State covering. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, I would take whoever's if you're going to pick Baylor. It's they cover the plus one. Whoever wins the game. That's such an easy coin flip. And then Wake Forest Clemson. I I think Wake Forest walks away easily with a win. I hate Clemson. Yep. Yep. I, I don't hate Clemson. I hate Dabo. So I just want Dabo to fail. I hate being told that this DJ guy was the next Trevor Lawrence. Yep, 100%. And he just has not even come close. Now, they've been playing better, but I don't think that they're back. They're definitely not back. Better wouldn't have gotten Kelly Bryant kicked off the team. That's that's a good point. (laughs) It's a good point. Um, All right, Maxim Bronson time. Check the bio. I fixed the game between Kentucky and Miami of Ohio. Speaking of Miami of Ohio, check this shit out. Miami of Ohio set off some fireworks, and you would th- nah. and Maxion is just known for shitty weather. They did it to themselves. There was so much smoke you couldn't even fucking see it, especially on TV. This was Who got just, fired for that one. <laughs> this oh is just so God. fucking funny. Um, also, I'm gonna that's check. amazing. Yeah, it's just so Mac. It's not even funny. Like. It, no matter what, there it's shitty weather or shitty play, and this is just so weird and so Mac. It's not even funny. Uh, I don't think I've hit on a single bet that that I've put on a Mac game this year, but you know, uh, I gotta still keep betting on it. I'm gonna check the score because this game is going on right now, twenty-eight to seventeen. At How half early? Time. It's oh, half time. okay, that's not bad. Uh, it's a lot. You're not gonna. Left. It's probably gonna hit the over, but it's not yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah, I had some reasoning on this one, but I kind of forget what it is. I think I just looked at some of the trends, but I it was a stab. I don't know. I got I gotta try to make make some money somewhere, so I'm just shooting from the hip at this point. But uh, Penn State talk. I'm. Just, I don't even want to do it. I just I don't want to do it. I don't blame you. Um, I don't know. We got Rutgers. Hopefully, it's a win. That's all I got. <laughs> like, <laughs> not bad, not bad. Yeah, Rutgers. Uh, this should be a win. This should be a win. It sh- it should be. Here we go. We are. We are. We are. Worst we are going to be Rutgers. Worst things have happened though. Oh, so, absolutely. Like... <laughs> but we are. Yeah, we're just. It's not. I don't even know if we're not that good. It's just we don't put in ourselves in positions to win. It's it's it's. We can think about next year. That's how I word it. We can start thinking about next year. It's just so sad that we're wasting the defense. Jaquan Brisker yep. is just so fucking good, and you're just you're wasting it. Arnold uh, Ebicady is just a dog, and you're just you're wasting it. I just. 
Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else. I'm just, I'm sad. It's I felt so clean. confident going into that game too. Cause I was like, we've had Michigan's number at home. So I was like, Harbaugh is just going to Harbaugh. But like I, yep. Fucking Jimmy, Jimmy got us. I don't know. Which, Harbaugh's going to Harbaugh. I don't know which Jimmy got us our own Jimmy or, or Jimmy Harbaugh. One, one of them doesn't matter. Us over. <laughs> so I don't fucking know. God damn it. All right. This has been all purpose garbage. Yeah, it is. Call the triple show for idiots. Go donate. Yes, to it is. November. Yes, you should. Shout out cores. Shout out cars. Drink it. Peace, Deke. See you, buddy. <laughs>